it's Missy and today I am showing you how I made this Legend of Zelda pop figure cake to celebrate the new Legend of Zelda game, Tears of the Kingdom. It's here! The long-awaited game is finally here and it has proven to be quite popular. I love the Funko Pop figure so much and it's been so long since I've made one, so therein lies my idea. To begin, I printed out this template that I created. Apparently, I am running low on ink, but I promise you the original colored one will print out for you, granted you have ink yourself. Adds to shopping list. <laughs> First, I removed Link's long strands of hair on each side of his body and the sword and space between his arm. Next, I laid a piece of wax paper over the template, traced around it, and then cut it out of wax paper. I removed the caramelization from my cake and leveled it all out. I placed my wax paper template on top and cut around it. I removed Link's head from the template and placed it on top of my cake to gauge where I needed to create separation from his body to make his head stand out more. I then carefully trimmed his body about an inch lower than his head. I chose to move him over to a different cake board to carry on with the theme, but white works too. I gave him a crumb coat and then covered him in white fondant. I used a variety of tools coupled with my hands to smooth and shape him. I also used the template of his body to help me gauge where all the small details underneath were so I could form the fondant to the cake correctly. I will link up the tools <laughs> I used here in the description box below. Next I removed his hair from his head but saved the other part for later. After rolling out brown fondant, I laid my template closer to the bottom edge of my fondant so that the front of his hair lies on my cake and then the excess behind it will cover the top half of the cake. I laid the template on top of my cake and applied water under the template before lining up my fondant. I then smoothed it all out, cutting off any excess. Once again, I use my tools, this one is called a ball tool, to shape the size of his head to give more definition. I decided to use cocoa powder to make his skin tone, and the reason for this is because I actually forgot to apply skin tone fondant under the hair first, but this worked out just fine and it was fun to experiment with. For his tunic, I started out with light blue fondant with a stray edge on one side and carefully laid it on his body as if he was going to sleep with his blankie. I cut a small slit on either side, just under his head, removed the excess over his arm, and then pressed the fondant into place along the side of his body. I removed the bottom half of his tunic, and then cut straight down, and then off to the right to expose the void for his shield. After laying the template on top, I cut out the neck opening for his tunic, and then moved on to his sleeves. Using the same method with two straight edges, I lined the straight sides up against the head and seam of the tunic and created a little sleeve about two inches wide and then adhere everything with water. I do the same on the other side, except this time I use the template of the shield to shape it. I laid the straight edge of my dark brown fondant covering just the bottom of his ankle on both feet and then cut off the excess all the way around. Then I went ahead and added a glove for his right arm. He looks kind of like Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not really. <laughs> for his pants, I cut two strips of taupe colored fondant and attached them in the space between his tunic and his boots. I lined up the straight edge of his tunic and pants and then carefully pushed the fondant upward to create a baggy look. I removed any excess and then pressed everything into place. For the tongue of his boo, I cut a strip of dark fondant about half inch wide, angled the side one way, and then angled the other side the other way about half inch over. Now we'll just place these on the top edge of his boots, off to the side a little, and then move on to his belt straps. I cut strips about a half inch wide and laid them across the link using the template as my guide. I laid the first one across his body, cutting one end at the neck, and then the other end by the edge of the shield. The next one went under his arm, Another one across his waist, cutting at an angle where the other belt lay. 
and then once again with the last piece going downward from his waist. Hang on guys because we're about halfway there. Intermission! Now's a, oh. Now the dog's barking. Uh -oh. For the shield I used dark blue fondant and cut around my template. I did this with his sword as well and used a ruler to straighten it out to harden overnight. Using the same shield template, I cut out a second piece of fondant, but in white this time. Next, I carefully cut out that outer silver edge to the shield, being careful to keep it intact. I laid that on top of the white shield fondant piece and cut out the inside portion. I lined it up over the blue shield to make sure it fit and then laid it onto a piece of wax paper to prepare for our silver metallic finish. I am using this silver luster dust that I will link up for you in the description box. This stuff is pretty great because you can use it dry or mix it with some extract depending on your project. After coating the border, I adhere it to the blue shield using a little bit of water along the edge all the way around. To add a metallic look to the sword, I used the top half of the sword as a guide to where my starting point was to be and then just went to town coating the entire fondant blade. I then removed all of the tiny details from the shield template, leaving nothing but what you see here because that's what we're doing next, cutting all these little tiny details out and coating the two little silver pieces. I cut three little triangles out of a one inch strip of white fondant for the Triforce and then a fourth piece using the template as a guide for the shape. Using some gold luster dust, I coated all of these triangles and then set them aside while I started assembling the shield. I like to do sort of a dry fit first before adhering everything, just to be sure it's all lining up well. Once everything looks good, I carefully used my tool to pop them back out to add a little bit of water and then used it again to push everything back into place. Word of caution, be careful touching anything that you coated with metallic dust because it will transfer to your fingers and then any fondant pieces nearby. Trust me on this one. Let's just say lessons were learned. I finished up the sword with its very own gold piece and moved on to Link's glove. I first rolled out a ball of dark brown fondant and then pressed on one side to narrow it out some. I used a fondant roller to flatten it to mimic the glove in the image and then cut the other end in the center pushing my knife almost all the way through. I smoothed out all the rough edges, applied some water in the center, and then placed the handle of his sword inside the opening. And then I kind of just pressed the ends together a little to secure it. I brushed some water onto his hand and on the top of his pants and pressed the glove into place. To attach his shield, I applied water on the center of the white fondant and a little on the edge of his belt and then press that into place on those areas. I wasn't thrilled with how messy the bottom looked here, so I decided a dark blue piece of fondant would look a lot better to clean it up a bit. This part is totally optional, but if you decide to do it, you want to measure how tall your cake is first and then cut a strip to that width. Mine was about one and a half inches tall. To make his eyes, I used the large open end of this tip to punch out two black perfect circles. This makes the eyes almost exactly the same size as the eyes on the template. To line them up, I laid my template onto the head and attached them using the template with a little bit of water. Here, I removed the eyebrows and laid them on the same color fondant as his pants. I cut around those and then lined them up onto his head with the template once again. To make his nose, I formed a ball of fondant into a three-dimensional triangle using my fingers to smooth and pinch in sharp edges. I applied cocoa powder to match his skin tone and then laid it on his face right under that brown strand of hair. Now onto his hair. I wanted it to be three dimensional looking like the image so I knew it had to be quite thick. I snaked out some of the same light brown fondant as the hair already on the cake, tapering the end. I placed the first piece off to the right, arching the wider end to create a swoop to his hair and then added definition with my ball tool. Using a smaller piece, I adhered it to the outside of the opposite side near the edge and then shaped it to line up to the edge of his head. I placed another piece in front of it with an end being much larger than the last and then a smaller piece for in between to fill the gap. I added a couple tiny pieces to the other side and then moved on to the giant piece in the center. I rolled out something that looked like a giant carrot and laid it in the center using the hairline underneath as a guide. 
I then went back and added definition to his hair using my ball tool. I created separation of his mane by cutting out a couple of little triangles at the end by his nose and then smoothed everything out. I went back one last time with my tools to create texture and definition and began painting his belts. Here is where I used a little bit of luster dust mixed with some vanilla extract. This is a much easier way to paint on the smaller details like his buckles. His buckles were pretty easy. All you need to know how to make is the capital letter E. I used some white food coloring to paint on his tunic details using the template as a guide. I added the black and red lines and dots with my food safe markers onto his shirt and then finished him up by placing a couple snaked out light brown fawnet pieces on either side of his head and our The Legend of Zelda Link Pop figure cake is complete. I had so much fun creating this cake for you guys and I hope you guys liked it too. If so, please give this video a big thumbs up. If you guys are new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell as I make a new video twice a month. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time when we make another trendy treat together. Bye-bye.